Precious viewers, I want to welcome you once again to Ask the Counselors. Um, this is our 10th edition of Ask the Counselors. We have been going on um, for the past couple of weeks, coming to you. Um, it's supposed to be a program for um, marriages, for singles, for people who are in courtship or dating, and also to help you in raising your kids. But in the past 10 weeks, we have been dealing with issues that people have been having in marriages. Um, in the past three weeks, uh, we dealt with a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his um, wife and the two shall become one flesh. But today and next week, we'll be coming to look at your questions um, specifically. My name is um, Dr. Selassie Ajinasari. I'm a medical doctor by profession and a pastor here at the Dome. And over the past couple of weeks, we've had uh, our main guests on the show, um, Bishop Charles Ajinasari and Reverend Mrs. Viviana Ajinasari, um, who are the founder and co-founder of the Perez Chapel Churches and the senior pastors of the Dome here. Um, we also have with us in the past couple of weeks, we've had um, Reverend Cecilia Ajo Dickens, who has been married for 34 years um, is a senior pastor here at the Dome and a seasoned marriage counselor. We've also had um, Reverend Mike Ankuma, who has been married for 36 years. Um, is a senior pastor here at the Dome and a seasoned marriage counselor as well. Today we'll be going ahead to answer the questions that have come in. We have um, over 100 and something questions that have come in. So if we don't get to your questions, please just hold on. We'll get to it. Uh, sooner or later uh, but you can also still keep your questions coming in as we go ahead and answer them you can keep your questions coming in and once we take note of them um, we, would, we would answer them but we are just going to go and have a short recap of what we've done over the past couple of weeks and then we'll come in and I'll give you the numbers to send your questions to and at some point in the show we would open the phone lines for you to call in but just stay tuned. You can invite your friends, you can invite um, loved ones, people who are having problems in marriages to join in and hear what will help them to make their marriage a strong one. Stay tuned. What should people's idea be going into the marriage? The challenges we are having today is because people go into marriage already while they are going. They are thinking, if I go and it doesn't work, I'll leave. Once you have that mentality, one leg is in the relationship, the other one is outside. The man uh, doing his responsibility as a man, conscious to do his responsibility as a man. The, the woman doesn't know that I'm married, is that the things I must do for my husband to be happy, so the things I do for my wife to be happy. When you pursue those things, ultimately you see yourself uh, cleaving together. If you have an abusing spouse, take it to the counselor, take it to your, your pastor. Let them pray with you, let them solve your problems, and stay together. Most people have never even heard your mom or dad tell them I love you. Then you marry and then you are told to say I love you. If you really love the person, why should the love be in the inhibition of telling the person I love you? Other parties are expecting that, okay, my wife would come and up, you know, she's wrong, she should come and apologize. She's also expecting that the husband should come and apologize. How do you handle a situation like that? Everybody's waiting, you know, for for the other party to come. If the two of them, they are all wise, it's cold war. If you don't apologize, me do I won't talk. Then they will have a problem. So at least one of them, preferably the husband, must be the foolish person in quotes in the relationship. This comes with communication. We should be able to talk about what we don't like and what we like, what you did that I didn't like, what you did that I got angry about. Let's discuss it and solve it. To forgive doesn't make you weak. Instead, it shows how loving you are. There are times, even between them, the problem is solved. But one party doesn't agree because of how they've portrayed yeah. the thing to their friends. And so they don't want to look the loser before their friends. And that's where couples must be careful what they share with their friends. Probably you've noticed that in the morning you wake up and there's nothing that is happening. Uh, but you didn't think it was a big deal. You thought, okay, maybe when I marry and I, I'm in the same room, you know, 
my penis will have an erection and you get in there and it's not happening um would can the two decide that since we've made the vow we'll go ahead with it the test of your erection is that you wake up in the morning and every, you have you, you have a raise and a lift and so if you are not getting a raise and a lift you know that this car the battery is dead <laughs> and if the battery is dead why do you want to put it on the road <laughs> Maybe when he gets on the road, it pushes it down the slope. <laughs> that's, that's why when you push it down the slope, what is that? I think that it doesn't take one day for you to know that you have erection. Yes. So I think from from your teenage days, you you always know that you you have a raise and a lift so yeah so if you don't have it you don't have it so you have to seek medical attention before you get married yes welcome back from that recap of the previous episodes of our ask the counselors you can go back to our youtube um channel on bishop charles ajinasari and there's a special playlist um, titled Ask the Counselors. And you should, you'll be able to get all the videos and episodes that we've had on this show. And I advise you, if this is the first time you're tuning in, to go back and watch with your spouse and your life will never be the same. There are some really, really, really important things that have been discussed over the past couple of weeks. Some of them by inspiration, some of them by intention. But they are it's bound to help if you are single you want to go and watch to help make your relationship or your courtship better we are going to go straight to answering the questions that have coming over the past couple of weeks this is from ya from akuse and she says good evening counselors i would be very grateful if you talk about staying with your in-law it is making my marriage not work how can i stay with my in-law without having problems how can I stay with my in-laws, in-law, without having problems? So I want, I want to throw it to the counselors. I think the previous week we spoke about in-laws, where I was talking about some in-laws make themselves monsters in-laws instead of mother-in-laws or father-in-laws uh, or sister-in-laws or brother-in-laws. Um, in-laws are supposed to treat their in-laws like if they are mothers or fathers they are daughter-in-law son-in-law as their son or daughter when you do that what you would not like for them to do to your son or your daughter you won't do to them um, that is the starting point and uh, i know women who've gone into marriage and they will fight anybody from the husband's side who visits but they want to always visit their their sibling or their brother who is married and so you, you have to start from the premise of what i don't want to be done to me i don't want it to i, I don't want to do it to my other partner i don't know if uh, in-laws are not bad at all there are some in-laws that are good they are sweet, but like we, uh, uh, we have always said, it's better to live apart from your in-law, maybe before you were going to marry. Financially, you were not sound, and you thought you could make it so that you will be able to keep some money to rent a house. I think that just after that, move from where, from your in-laws and make a home. They shouldn't even stay there to start with. But, <laughs> but then there are some who think that they can only make a home when they start with their parents. And uh, uh, some have worked, but not all. So I think that it's always better because when they come for marriage counseling, we ask them, do you have a place to stay? And sometimes they tell you, yes, but I want to keep, I want to save some money to maybe rent 
two rooms for myself and my wife. And so sometimes they will argue it out in such a way that you, you can do nothing than just to tell them, okay, just be there for a month. And they go and one month is over, another month. By the time you realize they are, they are even more than five months in their parents' house, I think it's not, yes, it's not the best thing. The best thing is just move out. If it's one room, get that one room and start life and uh, uh, have your peace. Okay, all right. So, precious one, Reverend Agwa, you wanted to say something. Yeah, uh, like Mommy said, I, 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 when I saw that, I thought, and uh, his question was, uh, how, do, how do you, like, that, that was going to be necessary to stay with my in-laws. How do I make the relationship work? So, whether you are staying with them or uh, normal in-law, how to, how to relate with them, I, I think that you should make it your, your aim to love your in-laws. You should make it your, even if they are, even if, even if they are not, uh, you have problems with them. As a Christian, the best way is to is to return love for even hatred. Pray for them because in-laws are very delicate. I mean, the, the problem in-laws are very delicate because they are the uh, the, 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 the the parents of your spouse. spouse. See, and so make it your decision right from the beginning to show them love pray for them and respond with love even when uh, you think that they are giving you problems at least when you do that you have done your best and normally love overcomes uh, hatred and maybe okay so um, we'll go on to the next question the topic of in-laws is probably a whole episode or two mm -hmm. and so we will make time specifically to come back and talk about in-laws and how to live and look at the different scenarios where probably your in-law thinks that you are not good enough for um, their son or their daughter uh, where your in-law keeps coming into the home unannounced you know we'll make time and have an episode for that but we'll go on to the next question just so that we can cover enough ground today this is from anonymous an anonymous viewer who says please my husband sacrifices too much for others at the expense of his family he can leave me with two kids and move about driving his mom till evening. She calls him early an and, problem. and plans his day. Sometimes you ask me whether I will go to work. I sometimes feel afraid for the future because he's too much of his country people, Ivorian that is. I'm watching from Ivory Coast. Please, can mommies help me personally? So we'll come back and address the in-law issue. So we'll go on to some other questions. This is from Juliet, who says, I've been married for five years with three children two boys and a girl. We live in a two-bedroom apartment. My question still is... still in-law. still in-law. <laughs> so we still have another in-law question. This is from uh, an anonymous viewer. It says, we have... Faustina from Oboase. Okay, Faustina from Oboase. says, we have been married for six years and we have been living in the mother's house. Okay, so another question in -law. from in-law. All right, so we'll come back and, and pick those questions up. So this is from an anonymous viewer who says, please, my husband doesn't discuss things with me. He rather discusses it with his friends. He has been hiding things from me. What do I do? So when your husband is not discussing things with you, but rather discuss with his friends, how do you manage or maneuver that, that scenario? I think you well, I don't know whether there is no element of trust. But in some cultures, and I always say this, um, they make men or sons think that you don't need to open up to your, your wife. In some cultures, she doesn't need to know what you are doing. It's a wrong premise from the beginning. You're the two of you shall leave and cleave and become one you are becoming one emotionally psychologically and uh, spiritually in everything in every way so who is the best person for you to be discussing your future with there's a woman living with you and uh, you have children and uh, the two of you have goals and you have purposes so why don't you discuss it with your wife but rather discuss it with other people especially your 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 friends 
not even friends your your family members than your wife so if that is what is happening in that relationship and the man doesn't know uh, we talked at length about communication they should start you should know that the woman is your help meet the woman is with you for the rest of your life and how to go forward in your life depends on your communication what you tell your wife what you discuss with your wife what you feed your wife so it is very necessary that he began telling things to the wife discussing things with the woman if he's not listening to us the woman should humbly ask him to listen or to watch the other episodes okay i think uh, last the the, the 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 topics we treated the last three weeks yeah. the in genesis chapter to the verses 24 we ended at the 24 mm -hmm. we should have ended at the 25 mm -hmm. because the 24 says therefore a man will leave his father and his mother be joined to his wife and they will become one flesh then the 25 says they were both naked the man and his wife and were not ashamed that means that there was transparency between them there was nothing hidden between them now if a relationship is going to work very well there must be the aspect of transparency so the man must be very transparent with his wife we are not talking about marrying like a uh, uh, reverend Ajo said marrying according to your culture we are talking about marrying according to the word of god so if you're going to marry according to the dictates of god then there must be transparency between you and your wife it can't happen that you have transparency with your friends and you don't have transparency with your wife what you are doing is you are setting your marriage up for a disaster and so couples must learn to be transparent with one another i think that uh, such problems are an overflow of a deeper problem in the marriage because naturally uh, how do we marry first become friends before you see each other you talk and that so how come now that you are married your husband is not even discussing things with you because the 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 the, 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 the climate of discussion i mean should have been right there from the time you saw you dated and all those kinds of things so you realize that something might have happened some of these things are i just uh, outgrowth of certain pro problem of trust problem with uh, transparency like you should be saying that there is something that is wrong somewhere that is giving rise to this problem and at times uh, couples must pray uh, god what is what, what is happening to my marriage why is that my husband is not discussing things with me and perhaps the real reason may come up okay this is also by an anonymous uh, viewer Please, my husband is a strong Christian, but he always quarrels with me. In local parlance, he likes doing aka, which is Cold War. Please, what should I do about it? What should I do about it? So, the aka is Cold War in English. Um, last week we spoke at length in it, but I don't know if we can just give a few tips. So, the man is a strong Christian, but he can go on a Cold War probably for a number of days. There's, there's a question mark to his Christianity. Mm -hmm. The man is a churchgoer, right. a very good churchgoer because, you see, to do a car or cold war mm -hmm. means that you are unforgiving. Mm -hmm. So if you can extend your unforgiveness, how Christian are you? Because a uh, 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 faith even works by love. Sure. If, you're, uh, if the just shall live by faith, faith works by love. And Jesus, even on the cross, forgave even those who crucified him. To the extent that the thief that was insulting him he even forgave him and and he says categorically in scripture that we should be able to forgive those who offend us 70 times seven in a day so that's 490 times now if, if, if you cannot forgive your spouse how, how are you going to forgive other people and if you are, you can't forgive your spouse and you, you are you, you are <laughs> doing cold war then your Christianity has a question mark I think the, the woman should be bold to have a dialogue with the husband 
maybe there's something like uh, Rev has just said, something deep there that has not been discussed. So they, they should discuss it and uh, pray about it. I believe that after prayer, God is, an, as, uh, he hears our prayer. It's so, a prayer answering God. So that's where I have the problem. Mm -hmm. If the, the woman is saying he's a serious Christian. Yeah. If he's a serious Christian, and I'm, I'm assuming that they will be having morning devotions. <laughs> How can you have morning devotions? Because Jesus said, if you are bringing your offering or sacrifice to the altar, and you realize that somebody has ought against you, not that even you have ought against the person, but the person has ought against you. Go and solve it before you bring your sacrifice. So how can your spouse, you sleep in the same room, on the same bed, the day you want to climb, you will climb and crucify her. <laughs> and how can you be such that you are, you are not on talking terms? Then there is something wrong. It means that you are not praying. Mm -hmm. Because the family that prays together, Say it together. together. Yeah. So even if you are praying, that prayer is not going. It's, it's not. It's so sitting the ceiling. issue should be discussed. Yeah. So if you are watching, um, you can let your husband watch um, the last episode before this one, the ninth episode. But we also decided that we'll have a special session where we discuss Cold Wars throughout that whole episode. It looks like it's very common um, in many homes, many, many marital homes. And mm -hmm. it's something we must make a conscious effort to break um, in order to move on um, because a lot of unforgiveness goes on there. Prayers are not being answered and so it's something we must look at. So we'll come back and look at This is from Theo from Cape Coast. says, I've, I've been watching the show and it's very educative. Well done. Well done. Kudos to the counselors. This is from a, an unknown uh, viewer who says, please, what are the measures to be taken to marry a man of God? So probably uh, answered we answered it last week. We answered it. All right. So this says, good evening. Please, I'm dating and preparing to get married, but my partner is seeing a lady in his church that I know, she, that I know she was forcing herself on my partner. The lady always comes to my partner's house, and when I go there to meet them, he tells me they are doing church. They are doing church work. Please, what should I do? The, 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 you see, she should, she should walk out of the relationship because already this is a recipe for disaster. The guy is seeing another lady. They are doing church work in inverted commerce. This church work is very deep. The one that they are talking about here is very deep. So if already they are doing church work, can you imagine when you get married to a man like that and he keeps doing church work, what it will look like? She should walk away. She's seen the handwriting on the wall she shouldn't but like she said is the it looks like it's the lady who's forcing herself on no. it no, no. No, no. it takes you are doing no. church work <laughs> it takes two to tango it takes two to tango so more so the advantage of the other ladies they are in the same church yeah uh, yeah so she should walk away yes. All right. so this is from sewa Priestley. i said bishop is it good to leave to live together, I mean a man and woman, to do whatever marriage couples do, whilst they are not married, but you will definitely marry. But the answer is so clear. I think she, she's, she knows the answer. Mm -hmm. It is not good. Scripture says you shouldn't fornicate. You are, you are saying you are doing what marriage couples do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, you, you, don't, you want to keep this thing for the man. When he, so that when he marries you, there's excitement and adventure but if you do this there will not be any adventure anymore on the day of your marriage yeah. i don't think the lady is a christian okay yes because if you're a christian you, know, you wouldn't ask this pastors such a question mm -hmm. because we know that you don't have to fornicate mm -hmm. and you can't live with a, a, a man mm -hmm. you you may probably be a church goer like bishop started with if you're a christian you know that God abhors it. Is it about you or it's about Christ? Marriage is not about us as individuals. It's about the glory of God. So I think right. she, should, she should surrender to Christ. Right. Well, walk out of it. Well, maybe, maybe 
the, 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 the lady is a young Christian. The guy is married is an old Christian. And he went there and convinced her that, oh, if I'm, I'll marry you, dear, there's nothing wrong with it. Hey, sure. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a believer. Oh, you. And that is why he's, I, 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 that's why he's asking. Because so, I, so. either he's convicted, the other people are convicted that what they're doing is mm. no good. But they want to ask the question to see whether they can get a stamp. So that's always, like, oh, okay, and that's it. But, or the person might, might, might be courting somebody who may be more spiritually older than her, respect her, him, and they are convincing that, oh, the truth of the matter is that if you will marry mm. there, it's nothing. You can't even ask anybody. That is why. Surprisingly, <laughs> surprisingly, they, they stay together for months, for years, and they never come together. They never You're get married. married. So the sister should not be deceived. So she if, if she's found herself the right already in this situation, how does she, moving forward, what? Well, she should tell the guy that they are sinning. We are, we are separating. Until we go, uh, until you walk me to the altar, yes. or yeah. you marry me, this thing must stop. Yeah. Yes, otherwise, she's being taken advantage of, number one. In fact, that's number two. Number one, you are sinning because you are living in fornication. Yes. This from Pastor Sam says, your teaching on marriage is very sound. I thank God for bishop and wife and rev and the counselors. The devil is really attacking Christian homes and it is very good. You are treating it very well. I'm a Nigerian and I watch you on Precious TV. God bless you. God bless your good work. Amen. This is from another anonymous viewer. Please, I'm a young guy of 28 years who is still struggling to achieve something. Please, I'm now a taxi driver just because, just because I don't want to sit in the house without doing anything, without doing anything. Now my problem is, the lady I want to marry said that she doesn't like the work I'm doing. We have been dating for about five years now. Please advise me as, as your daughter. I don't want to regret getting married to, as your son, I don't want to get, regret getting married to her. S seriously. I even struggled a lot before buying the. I even struggled a lot before buying the car I'm using as a taxi. Please advise me. If the lady doesn't respect his work, mm. they can't marry, because she would always look down on you, and you don't. Need, you need somebody who appreciates who you are and what you do. Um, if the person does not appreciate, I mean, to buy a taxi, mm. that's a big achievement. Mm. You know, so if after having done all this, she can't even appreciate you for it, I think he, he should look for somebody else. What if, the, what if the lady is seeing potential beyond what you are doing and feels you should, you should do something better? You should, you should push yourself a little harder than you have pushed yourself. I, I don't think that is what is happening here. What is happening here is that the lady has a problem with the work he's doing. So the lady is looking down on his work. I mean, everybody has to aspire to become something. Mm. Everybody has got to start at a point. Mm -hmm. And your starting point does not mean where that, that's where you would end. Uh -huh. So if the lady appreciates him today, she can encourage him to aspire to become something else. But if now she's looking down on him, I think that uh, he's in for a problem. But the problem I see is that he said they have been there for five years. Mm. Mm. What did he, she saw at first when she said, uh, uh, he said, I love you, and he accepted. And now that he has been able to buy a taxi, now he's despising him. Uh, Maybe the lady's standards have changed. Yeah, okay. yes, Maybe yes. the lady has met friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are times people come into contact with these friends mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who begin to live a certain lifestyle mm. and probably she watches a lot of television and she listens and when she watches the television she watches the uh, telenovela yeah. parts and so things that and these days we have a lot of people who've come out of school and all that and doing all kinds of things and so she's thinking that hey he's not my class mm -hmm. Because if it's five years, I don't think the guy never insinuated anywhere that he doesn't want to marry her. Mm. I think she is having a problem marrying him. 
And if she is having a problem marrying him, I think the guy must look elsewhere. Sure. It, the, there are times the emotional ties, it becomes very difficult. And, you know, some guys will tell you, Bishop, the challenges are going to start all over, all again. over again. But there are times it's better to start mm -hmm. all over again mm -hmm. than to end up with somebody who will never appreciate you. She can't encourage you. She can't pat you on the back because for men, our job is our satisfaction. And so if you are a man and you are working and you come home, you expect your wife to appreciate you, to smile. To, but if you would come home and you are, you know, then already you are finished. Yeah, right, That's from Ernest from Sakumono. And he says, um, can God lead you to enter a marriage which is on the onset difficult? So you've already seen difficulty in the marriage. Can God lead you, <laughs> maybe hear a voice from God or um, probably a prophecy or you have, you feel an inner peace to go ahead with this, even though you can, you can like, see some difficulties. Is it, can God lead you to enter into a marriage? Which is difficult at the onset. So we're, a probably relationship or a marriage? marriage? A marriage. A marriage. Why, why would you want to marry or go into a marriage which is, which is difficult. There's only one Hosea in the Bible. Oh. <laughs> There's only one Hosea in the Bible. Scripture says that he who finds a wife, in fact, other versions say so, he who finds a perfect mate or he who finds a suitable mate finds a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. So the mate you are finding must be suitable. So if the person is not suitable, why do you want to go and put your head in a, in, 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 in a hole where you know that a snake can easily come out and bite you? I think that once you detect that this marriage, it's going to be difficult, change direction. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> all right. My question is, are they already married? No. 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 So I, okay. I think so that's the question. Can I enter the yes. marriage? <laughs> This is from Abina, and she says, My question is about my children and their marriage. In fact, they married very well under God's ordinance, not having sex before marriage, but their marriages are falling apart, and I'm worried about it. I'm worried about it. Um, they didn't have sex before marriage, but you know, them. being a virgin before marriage is not a guarantee of success in the marriage. The, gu the guarantee of success in the marriage is fulfilling scripture. Knowing the role of the man, the role of the woman. Knowing that if you marry, you need to leave, cleave, and be one flesh. Knowing that in marriage, there has to be tolerance, like we've been discussing over the, over the weeks. So if you, if, if, you, if, if you went into the marriage as a virgin, and after that, you, you are insulting your husband, you are uh, maltreating your husband. You are not taking care of him. You know, your, your, your marriage will, will, will end up in, in a disaster. I wonder if they married the right people. They married Christians, born again Christians, and they really did their uh, courting. They are courting. They, were, they, they went through the counseling session before they got into the relationship. As I, at times, when you start courting, there are red flags that you, can, you have to check. <coughs> and if you don't check these red uh, flags, you say, oh, it will be okay. Maybe you have an abusing partner, abusive partner. He'll be abusing you, insulting you. At times, he wants to slap you. And you just say, oh, this one, I'll pray about it. If I get married, it will be okay, it will be okay. By the time you say, Jack, you are already married and things have been changed. So I wonder if they really married true Christians and people. Or oh, they studied each other. Each other. Mm -hmm. they, I believe that they're talking about sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you know that, did you see the, the sons or the daughters? Did you? Do some background checkings before you married or the mother was so excited that I have virgins and now men are coming to marry them let me take some time and tell us all 
a story that I listened to on Asitine Munzem on Adom FM. This lady was in church, a particular church. I know the church's name, but not for this platform. And there was a young man in the church who came to be an exilous young man, was leading the youth in things. And he found this young lady who was also zealous in church. And he, he proposed to the lady, and the lady, like Mama says, there was something that was resisting this proposal. But pastors were saying that he's a good guy, he has money, he can take care of you, he loves God. But after they married, any time they were having sex, after one minute of the front, the others would go to the back. And it continued. The lady couldn't tell the pastors, couldn't tell the parents. So he was a he was a homosexual. Was a homosexual. So we have to check all these things very well in these days where marriages are somewhere. If you want to marry, marry the biblical way. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? So it's not just anybody at all that. But this one, they married the biblical way. Or said the pastors, just, like the one you are seeing. Uh, the pastors. The pastors, oh, said, was. Yes, yeah, so I think <laughs> it is not just the pastors. Do your own background, background check. Background check. And he is, the guy was rich. Mm. But the, girl, the lady said, I couldn't tell the kind of work mm -hmm. he was well, doing. Yeah. And he loved to travel. He was traveling. Every two weeks, he was traveling. <laughs> Not knowing, mm. somebody had to tell her from uh, overseas. Uh, overseas that this is what he comes to do. Mm. You know, those fraternity, they have money. So we have to pray, like my colleague would always say, it's prayer. God will lead us, God will lead us to the right person. I will use this as a testimony. On my daughter's 24th birthday, I prayed, I prayed that God, I want my daughter to marry a notable man's son but uh, it was not bishop Ajinasari i was thinking of are you getting me yeah i was thinking of some abroche because he, she wanted to travel abroche uh Ujashio's pastor but because of prayer god will lead you to where it should go so it is not just she's a christian so so let me also help the lady. So I also married as a virgin. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife was a virgin when we married as well. But that has not, that has not taken away the amount of work. As a matter of fact, I was a pastor when I married, um, and I was counseled by pastors. You know, Reverend Ankuma was one of my counselors. Omar Joe was one of my counselors. We had some other senior uh, men of God who counseled us. Even with that, with all that counseling at that high level, it still didn't take away the amount of work. That had to be that had to be done, you know, to make the marriage work. All I'm trying to say is that you may marry as a Christian, you may be a virgin, you may be audacious, but there's still work that has to be done where you have to put your hand to the floor and make the marriage work. You know, and so the fact that you've you've done you are your audacious doesn't mean that when you enter in just like an angel, everything will fall in place. There is still work that has to be done. You still have to continue to educate yourself, continue to read, continue to work at it until the marriage you know, begins to work. And so, if you are watching and you think things will fall in place just because you are Ujashos, that is, that is, I think, a lie from the pit of all. You need to work the, you need to work the married in order to make it work. All right, we'll go to the next question. I don't know if, um, this is that we've been married for six years. The major problem in our marriage has to do with when my wife is not safe and both of us want to see each other. <laughs> As Christians, we don't want to use any contraceptives because of our faith. We have three children, and we are very comfortable with the natural way. Mm. Bishop, is there any way we can fight this battle, which is creating a lot of problems? <laughs> you see, uh, the world has advanced. Mm. And, and with the advancement in the world now, you can't do, when you do the natural way, it will end up in pregnancy. My brother, do contraceptive. And well, contraception or contraceptives don't stop you from enjoying sex in marriage uh -huh. and and stop being uh, I, I, I'm natural I'm natural you have eight children if you play with this thing mm -hmm. because 
from the way you are talking, your wife is very fertile. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, please. I think, uh, <laughs> I think uh, you can see the family planning uh, nurses. They would advise you, if you want the natural, they can teach you how to go about it. And if you want the contraception, but, 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 but I, I think it's a problem. I think it's a problem. I think it's a problem. In the, in the, you know, recently on uh, 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 Give Me Children, mm. the doctor said, even with ovulation, mm. and so they can teach you the natural way. He is a doctor, uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it's a problem. I, I think it's a problem here is that when the wife is not safe, mm -hmm. they, and you, they want to have a sexual encounter, yeah. it's difficult for them. But if he wants to use the natural method and the wife is not safe and he will just be able to control himself and say, this one, I know that you are not safe. Let me not go there. But his, his question is that even though he knows his wife is not safe, he wants to go and, have, he wants to go and enter the throne room. Hey, oh, and, how can you eat your cake and have it? I think it's another problem. Like, he thinks that using contraception is unchristian. Yeah, that's right. So, so because of our faith. Mm -hmm. So what you should know is that using contraception, uh, I mean, it's not unchristian. Yeah. There, there, because there's some there, faiths there's nothing wrong are about yeah. there's yeah. some faiths who yeah. are very much against yes. uh, contraceptives. So. And the Bible says that the man who is able to take care of his home is worse off than an infidel. And so if you continue to give birth and you not be able to take care of them, they are rather disobeying God. And so there's not there are many different contraceptives mm -hmm. out there. Um, so many, so many countless contraceptives out there that you can find uh, that you can use without without any. Without and there's nothing wrong with that. And so the, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't feel guilty using contraceptives. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, this is um, this is from Rashida, who says that please, how do I, how will I deal with a situation where your spouse keeps bringing up old cases whenever there is an issue and you try to make up? God bless you. So, I think we have answered this sometime. Yeah. I think we keep having many different uh, uh, versions. Uh, so it's a, it's a different version of uh, unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so please, just, maybe just one statement, just so uh, that if Rashida is watching. When you, when, once you deal with an issue, let it, let it go like God forgives us. He, last week, I, I think I, I made the statement. Uh, Kenneth Hagin made that statement. It said, when God forgives you, he he, he puts your son in his sea of forgetfulness, never to dig it up again. So once you forgive your spouse, um, you are saying that I'm not going to dig up this issue again. And so when there another issue arises, you don't say that last time you did so and so and so and so. It's gone. All right. So this is my question is this. What would you advise a young man who wants to marry a lady who is older than him five to ten years? Hmm. Naturally, the, 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 uh, the difference in, in, in ages in marriage, uh, I mean, what, 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 what counsels that it should not be more than 10 years. Because after 10 years, you are too. Some, some, you, 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 you have physical problems with sex, when, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, within 5 to 10 years, if the, if the two of them are comfortable, but after 10 years, they, after, after, before, uh, more than 10 years. I, I, have, a, I have a testimony. Mm -hmm. I'm a few years older than my husband, and uh, I think it has really worked. Mm -hmm. So if you are there and you are contemplating, you are a lady, or you are a man and you want to marry, first of all, do you love the lady? If you love the lady and you are not afraid, you are not scared about the age, go ahead. I have not regretted mar marrying my husband. <laughs> so I think it has worked. We have beautiful children, beautiful grandchildren, and we are still going. And you are so. growing young. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think that if it's more than 10 years, it will be a problem. Uh, but in the area of the sex thing, Normally, it's the men who, who tire. Mm -hmm. The women don't. <laughs> so um, the other time, Mommy and I were reading the story of an 84-year-old woman yes, who is uh, um, befriending 25-year-olds. <laughs> you know, so the women, they don't have challenges. However, you, 
when when the, the, the it's more than 10 years the woman will age and, and and leave you behind and there are times you will be that kind of a person who can't present your wife and that will lead to challenges the, 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 the president i won't mention the country it's about the woman is about 22 uh, <laughs> more older, but I mean, they appear in public very beautiful. No, no, they appear in public. In their country, the, 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 the things they say is different. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is from Richard says, from Sunyani. He says, if marriage will lead a couple to hell due to their incompatibility, please, is it advisable for them to separate? <laughs> you see, um, the issue of incompatibility the bible says what god has joined together let no man put asunder and so you are married once you are you marry the person you are married to the person aha uh -huh. i'm not saying divorces don't happen divorces happen aha uh -huh. but people use the license of uh, we are not compatible and some even go as far as saying, you see, and when we are going to marry, apparently that was not my perfect partner. There's, and, and you see, she, she, she's not my perfect rib. There's nothing like perfect rib. If there was a perfect rib, then when your spouse dies, you can't marry again. So, because the Jews believe that for every person, there are seven people you are attracted to. If there are seven people you are attracted to, it means that there are people you will see and you will shake like the, you know, this person you married that you are shaking. Uh -huh. So you will have to decide that this is my marriage. I'm going to make it work because if God gives you even an angel and you don't decide to work on the marriage, the marriage will be like hell. And so you've got to work Apart on Apart from working on your marriage, you work on yourself. I always love saying this. I've realized that most of us are selfish in marriage. It is always from our side or from our perspective, what I want. And after a few weeks, it's like, I don't want this one. Most of us are selfish. But Bible and Jesus, that just as we should, if we want to follow after Christ, we should die to self. In marriage, we should also die to self. We should think highly of the other person. We should decide that I want to make my marriage a happy one. Most of the time, what young men say that or young people say or married people say is that I want to be happy. You can't be happy. You make your marriage a happy one. Mm -hmm. So that is what mm -hmm. I can say. It's not automatic. It's not yeah. automatic. So you make it a happy one. You make your marriage a happy one. Yeah. If you are watching us and you have questions as these have come through or probably you, you sent your question and we answered it and you think there's a follow-up to it that we need to know about to help you know Taylor make your question to you um, you can send us a whatsapp or text message to 020 343 8710 020 in the next 10 minutes we'll be opening the phone lines I'll give you the numbers shortly but this month of August also happens to be our family month, our month of family, of marriages, uh, marital success, of raising kids here at the Perez Dome. And so you can tune in every Sunday um, and watch Bishop um, from 7 to 8.30 and then from 9 to 10.30 um, as this month is dedicated for family, you and your, 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 and your spouse. And our 35th. Okay, Marie so, so I'll allow Bishop to, uh, <laughs> Bishop, they didn't hear that, please, can you? It's also our 35th marriage anniversary. I would have been married to this young lady for 35 years, and it keeps getting better. Yeah. Yes, so we'll be sharing some of um, the things we've learned over the years, some of the challenges we've encountered, and how we've dealt with them this month. Yes, and so uh, 31st August happens to be the wedding anniversary of Bishop and Mama Vivi, and August has always been our month dedicated to family, um, to marriages, and to raising and to raising kids. So we want to get your, your spouse and your family to watch us every Sunday. And most of the snippets you watch every time are from our month of August. And so be, be prepared for more. Um, there's more in store for you. Um, so this is from a pastor. He says, please, pastor, 
um, I'm a pastor. Can I marry someone who is not a mature believer with the aim of helping her grow spiritually? Can it work out? Can it work out? Because I want to help her grow spiritually. Okay. That idea is wrong. Okay. You can still help her grow spiritually without marrying her. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 those, that, that kind of relationship never, never was when, uh, uh, well, the premise is bad. The premise is bad. Where people want to uh, marry so that they can help. Mm. You want to have, uh, you want to help. And so, help. normally it goes. She will realize that when, uh, they marry, and their expectations are not met. Mm -hmm. the, the, the idea is, ah, you, uh, you didn't want, uh, it's because I want to help you, because that's why I married you now. That kind of thing. So, if she loves her, and look at her, and she, 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 she wants to marry her, she should marry her, but not with the intention that, oh, I want to help her grow spiritually. The premise is very bad. It, 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 it don't work. Mm -hmm. That's not your new convert. If it's your new convert, mm. disciple them, let them grow. Sure. But if it's your wife, you are marrying her because mm. the two of you, you want to be a, a family team and uh, you want to support one another to attain your goals. Okay. Yes. But does the, does the fact that the person is a new believer, should that be considered um, being a pastor? Um, you see, if he's a pastor, why would he want to marry a young believer? Because they will have problems. Because they, they can't reason spiritually on the same level and it's it, it's you see marriage it's it's like climbing a ladder and for a pastor you you are climbing a spiritual ladder you are on the top and your wife is down for for you to come crashing down all she needs to do is to pull the ladder from under you and you come crashing down why doesn't he look for a matured believer who understands what he understands because we even say that when you get married, you need to grow with your spouse. So if, 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 if and, and for pastors, we encourage our pastors to even go to the same seminars you go to with your wife. Because there are many pastors who have overgrown there. And when you grow far ahead of your spouse, what happens is that you start going into meetings and conferences where she's not a part of it because she doesn't understand you think that she's not thinking on the same level and very soon you start making friends in that conference and as you make friends you may end up having emotional bonding with somebody and emotional bonding easily leads to a spiritual spouse and a spiritual spouse leads to adultery and so um, it's better you get a mature person okay um this is from Akwesi he says dear counselors as christians is there any prescribed procedure of having sex with your wife? Is it not also a sin to have sex with your wife in the morning when fasting? Okay. So is there a procedure? Well, <laughs> most, most Christians think that sex should be the missionary way. The missionary method is <laughs> or crucifixion, you know, where the man is always on top. Um, the Bible says that we are not dealing with sex in marriage. But the Bible says the marriage bed is undefiled. Um, that does not mean that you can sodomize your wife. No, that that's is wrong. Inal, that's inal anal sex. sex. You can't have anal sex in a Christian marriage. Yes. Um, so there are different things you can do. And the, in the area of sex, the more you do that with your spouse, the more you learn. And the more you discover the most comfortable positions that are good for you. Because when your wife is pregnant, there are some positions you, you wouldn't even want to try. Uh -huh. So the more you practice, the more you get used to what it's comfortable with both of you. And then if you are fasting, I assume that your fasting is starting from the morning to probably the evening or maybe 24 <laughs> hours or 48 hours, etc. So why would you want to exert so much energy in the morning before you start your fast? The Bible says by agreement, if you want to fast, that period put off the sex bit of it. Yes. But would it be wrong to be fasting and your spouse would say, okay, today I want to have sex with you? Would in the evening, 
Or in the morning. Or probably doing your fast. Maybe you are doing a two-day fast. And in the afternoon. <laughs> That's why Bible says we should discuss it. I mean, if you are married to a, a woman who is also a believer, who understands fasting and prayer, they say you should agree that we are, dear, I'm fasting for two days, please. So she understands. And you also understand. So, so if, if she after, doesn't agree, then you break the fast. You break the fast you, then. You, you, you perform all righteousness. All right. So this is from um, Ramatu who says, I'm married for about two years. My husband doesn't have sex with me. I asked him and he said, I don't attract him even before we got married. Before we got married. Then they are in trouble. <laughs> this is one of the basic things you are talking about. You are marrying somebody who who is not attractive to And then you still went, well, uh, went ahead and married her. Probably, I married him. <laughs> probably at the time they were married, the man did not say that. Mm -hmm. So she, said, thought, she thought that she was the best thing for the man. <clears throat> probably it's now that the man is telling her that, that even, that that even oh, okay. when we were married, you were not attractive to me. So it's the man who we are to blame. Why did he marry her? when he saw that she wasn't attracted to him. Because one of the things we teach uh, uh, when you are choosing a partner is that apart from the fact that you have a witness in your spirit or you know that God is leading you, you uh, and you are mentally stimulating to the person, the person has good character. The person must be attractive to you. Ten years from now, when you look at this lady, will she still give you the kicks? 20 years from now when you look at this lady and there are times it's very easy to know how a lady will look like 20 years from now by looking at the mother <laughs> so yes when you look at the mother when you see mama you can tell that her daughter will be how her daughter will look like you know 30 years from now so um, I'm sure when you do your homework well you won't have these challenges I think that the lady should see a counselor Maybe they are pastor. Talk things over. She didn't keep it. Because the more she keeps it, the more she is hurting. So she should seek counsel. Right. Um, we should make we should make our mm, ourselves attractive. Mm. Even if from the beginning the man was not attracted to you, how did you grow? Some of us when we marry, we leave everything to the marriage. We don't care about how we look. We don't stimulate our minds. Even if we are not going to formal school, are we reading? Are we abreast with time? Can our spouses hold conversations with us? I Me, mean, I don't know football, but I will talk football because I listen to what people are saying. I support my you because my son supports my you. <laughs> my husband supports Chelsea, but I don't. I support my so when they are talking I listen I don't know anybody but when I hear any so you are able to keep conversation you can see, you can see me I'll, I'll, I'll take you through <laughs> <laughs> the whole squad <laughs> and at times ladies when they yes. before they, they, they get married they, they are well dressed yes they keep themselves well just after the wedding they think that oh the ring is my, my, uh, my finger. I have everything, so uh, anything goes. You get to the house, and the, the man is from work, and the hair is unkept. He's in a dirty dress. The house is unkept. You know, you are smelling, and the man complains, and you, you are not doing anything about it. The man will, will move on. So, so uh, we'll be opening the phone lines, um, and the number to call is 0207-1001, 0207-1001, so give us a call, let us hear from you if you have any questions, if you have any questions. Um, so this says, Bishop, my husband is going out with this old lady priestess. Mm -hmm. For the past one and a half years now, we don't sleep on the same bed. He hardly sleeps at home. Of late, he doesn't eat my food. He doesn't even let me wash for him again. He sends this lady to all his family gatherings, and the family too has accepted her. His mom even sometimes 
come, comes to the woman's place to spend time with her. He has stopped taking care of me and the children uh, and the child. I have talked to his family and pastors. I have fasted and prayed, but I'm not seeing any results. I'm now planning of working out. It's a big thing. But I think that that, that priestess has taken the man. Mm. <laughs> so either you keep praying and believing God that your man will come back to you or probably you need to um, find something else. Mm. So this is, um, this is from Mauli. Um, it says, men and women of God, I want to find out if it is normal that after marriage, the desire of a man to have sex is totally gone. And can there, can there be four days without touching my wife? Is this feeling a normal one? Thank you. Oh, um, I think probably you, 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 you've been married not too long. Um, seven years. So probably you can answer this one. Because... Okay, so I'll come back. I'll come back and answer. <laughs> We have Charlotte from Incorporate. Charlotte, uh, we are live on Ask the Counselors. Please ask your question. Charlotte. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. You are live on Ask the Counselors. Go ahead with your question. Hello. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Charlotte, we can hear you. Go ahead. Um, the counselor, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, um, my husband and I have been married for seven years, and I was seven years in the last two years that she cheated on me. And they have been please, please, in our can, marriage. Can you take your time? Yeah, I suspect him on all the time he has, and he's, he's also very, he's, he's not open to me. He makes calls to other women who I'm um, upset. I don't know how to handle this issue. Okay. Charlotte, can you take your time and ask your question? You are speaking too fast that we can hear you. Um, you've been married okay. for seven years. Please go on from there. Yes, please. I've been married with my husband for eight years. Eight years, seven. And in the last two years, he cheated on me. Okay. And since then, I have been a lot of trust issues. Okay. Okay. And I think I have a day last week. We had a serious fight because of a certain woman. And, and um, I, haven't, I don't know how to handle this because I suspect him on almost everything he does. I don't know whether they are my insecurities or All right. it's also about him. Thank you, Charlotte. So um, we'll put it before. Yes, I think that once trust is broken, I, we, we've been talking about it. Trust is like a glass. When it's broken, it takes time to be able to gather the pieces together. And uh, instead of them, I, I, you see, when you, you, the, you are at fault, you have to now pamper the woman and encourage her, build her confidence to trust you. Uh, but if you also keep doing it somehow, it becomes a problem. The other issue is that the lady must also come to the place where if the husband has apologized, and says he won't do it again she can surround him with love and trust and believe that he won't do it again and not be suspecting him in everything because from what she said she's suspecting him in everything and when you you, you somebody lives like that he, he can't please you uh, and so you you want to give him the benefit of the doubt all right and so um Charlotte, that's for you. Um, I was supposed to answer a question on uh, after marriage. Um, <laughs> does your sex, your sex drive go down? Um, I think, first of all, the man needs to look at his age. At a, as a set, at a certain age, as a man, your sexual drive begins to go down. So it depends on your age. But if you're a young man, uh, when you read books... But that means you are, you are old. <laughs> so that's about 50, 50 from 50 onwards. Mm -hmm. But if you're a young man, um, when you read books, they'll tell you that at least you should have sex three to five times in a week. You know, of course, there are weeks that probably you may, a whole week where probably you are exhausted or stressed out at work and you can't perform as usual. But at least three, 
five times uh, in a week. You know, it's considered it's considered normal. Uh, and if it's because of the way your wife dresses or probably something she does, you can sit down and have an objective discussion with her and say, sweetie, you know, the way you've been looking nowadays, I think probably if you did this hair or if you look like this for me, uh, it would help with my sexual drive. I think you can have that discussion. I don't know if... Um, I, I think if there's attraction... Please, can I? We have Prince from, Prince from Sugakope. Prince, you are live on Ask the Counselors. Um, go ahead with your question. Okay, please. Uh, I'm a senior as master currently for private schools. And my lady I'm dating, I've just joined the prison, prison officer course. And she's requesting that unless I my job before I can get married to her. And that is a lady I really love uh, very well. And I don't know what to do. So we bought everything for the marriage before she came out with this decision. Uh, he, okay, he's a senior, uh, he's a house master of private, private school, school, and the lady wants him to leave mm -hmm, and do job. another job. You see, yeah, you want to uh, uh, um, stop the job and do it. No, but that is the job you love. Uh, when you when you leave this job, if you are not careful, the next job you go and do, you might not you might not like it. And so you don't have to quit your job because of love. You see, it's happened before. Before uh, in England, the, the king of England abdicated his throne for the woman he loved. And the rest of his life became very miserable. Years earlier, years earlier, there was an opportunity for a princess in England to also abdicate her princessship and marry. She went ahead and, uh, for the princessship and left the marriage, even though she loved the man. What I'm trying to say is love is a choice. You don't, because of love, leave your profession, which you know you are called to do, just to satisfy your uh, the person you love otherwise you will have problems because when you love a job you wake up to the job with joy when i, I mean I, I love preaching it's it's my calling you wake me anytime and you want me to preach i would preach because this is what i'm called to do there are people who are called to be lawyers some are called to be engineers some are called to be one thing or the other and so what you are called to do please go ahead and if any lady will want to sacrifice or want you to sacrifice your job for her then you are in trouble all right there, Reverend, there are women who will love you and love everything about you there's a woman who is waiting to love you with that position you have but if somebody is pulling you mm -hmm. out of what you are currently doing and that means she's not for you. She doesn't respect what you do. Yes. Yes. And in these days that we don't have jobs mm -hmm. in Ghana, mm -hmm. then you, you have a good job. And because of love, you want to leave a good job and go and love. You're <laughs> in trouble. <laughs> you were saying something about attraction. Attraction. If you, you, marry and you marry someone that you are attracted to, when the person is coming from the bathroom, the moment you see even the calves with the towel around, you have a race. So if you are newly married and <laughs> you find it difficult to be attracted to sex, that means... Is that, 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 that a man married as, a, as a, an old man? Yes. Because if he's a young man, man yes. then there's a problem. There's a problem. There's a real problem. So we have Cindy from Kofodia. Good evening, Cindy. You are live on Ask the Counselors. Go ahead with your question. Um, my question is, what will you do if your mother is always asks for money and she will tell you that don't tell your husband that she asks you to? Anytime she wants to ask you, I will give you a warning that all your money. What will you do and what does it do? Okay. <laughs> all right. So if your mother-in-law always asks you for money and tells you that don't tell your husband about it, um, what, what do you do? Um, what does it also mean? Yeah. What does it also mean? I think that you have to tell your husband. Mm. Because 
Um, <laughs> why would she want to be doing mm -hmm. that with you? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow morning, if she accuses you of not taking care of, taking care of her, how do you prove you took care of her? Mm -hmm. And so tell your husband. Yes, tell your husband. And probably tell your husband maybe because she was feeling shy to mm -hmm. tell him. Mm -hmm. That's why she told you. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So this, um, this from Samson from Nalirugu. He says, good evening, sir. God richly bless you for blessing us with wisdom, the wisdom of God. Um, this is from Ekia, who says, Hi, good evening, I'm Ekia. Can a Christian woman who has lost her husband go and sleep with a man before marrying him? Go and oh, sleep. <laughs> the fa when you lose your husband, you become <laughs> single. So if you go to sleep with any man, you are fornicating. Mm. And so you can't fornicate. Scripture is against it. Uh -huh. So this is, this is good evening. Um, we have Justice on the line. Good evening, Justice. You are live on Ask the Counselors. And um, go ahead with your question. Okay. Yeah, Justice, go ahead with your question. We can hear you. Okay. I have this lady that is being dressed with. But this lady has told me like this that um, she doesn't want to marry me. It looks like the parents are talking to me. You have gone for the marriage later. I want to marry her. So I just don't know what to do right now because she's still saying that it is her parents want to marry me, and she says that she doesn't like me. I just don't know what to do. Please, can you help me on that? So I think he said he's gone for the list, but looks like the lady's parents are pressurizing her or the family, and the lady doesn't want to marry him again. He doesn't know what to do. So he should he should approach he should approach the lady the lady ask her do you really want to marry me if you don't i don't want to waste my time i don't want to waste your time and then go and see the lady's parents and say that your daughter doesn't want to marry me and uh, i don't want her to marry me because you the parents want her to marry me yes it's always better mm. to break uh, an engagement or, or uh, yes, know, an engagement. A, a, a relationship than to end to, to get into the marriage and have problems so even if it's the last day and you think that mm, it's, it's always better always better all right good evening. okay we have victor from swedro um and you want to speak in chief victor part of uh with our question here hello yes victor um but you uh baby na Wow, 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 so Victor was asking, um, he met a lady who has one child out of wedlock, and um, he, he's thinking of marrying her, and the lady has also agreed, and he's asking if it's okay to go ahead. And Bishop answered and said, it's okay to um, go ahead and marry. So far as he's in love with the lady, and he can take care of the lady and the child, um, he can go ahead and marry. And if even she has two or three children. Even if she has two or three children. You know, it's still possible. You know, we have we have Felicia from our Felicia. Good evening. You are live on Ask the Counselors. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, Felicia. I'm Pacho Koso. Koso, Koso. Ah, once in a month 
Okay, all right. So, uh, so, so she was asking, um, when we're talking about sex, and we made mention of the fact that in a week you should have sex with your spouse three to five times a week. That's what um, some uh, experts call normal. Um, she's asking, she has sex with her husband once a month, a, a month and the husband is. Bishop asked how old he was, and she mentioned that he's 43 years old. And Bishop was saying that now she's one week. Yes. Every that, week. that every week she should try and give him oh. sex three times, you know, and so that. Um, <laughs> okay. We have Ose from Kuvodia. Ose, good. If, okay, Ose. Um, Pacho, who's our question? No? <laughs> Hello, Ose. Ose. All right. We have a question from Yeah. Hello, I say. And Pacho, this our question. No. Kase, I say. I say. I I know say. I say. I say. I Okay. Or say or bad or well, she or baby or bad on any kunejai. Obey me, our inana. She's married. He's married a lady. The lady has been divorced from the husband. Can he marry her? Yes. Obey me, our inana. So on any kunejai, dear. Now don't know. Where do you ask him? Be any home. Obey me, our inana. Yeah, yeah. It is true that the woman is divorced. And because there are times mm. it's separated and yeah, yeah. Separated. Uh, and there's a little problem. There's a little that problem that solved. And then when we come to Medina, but so you should make sure that just as as all she say, as all you should say, pass a one way guy and a one one time not to take a crack. Inti as a you should be here. So one way dia, then the bus you have for you to be some one way guy. You bet me how I know. Uh, so if they, you know, there are times that people are separated. If they are separated, you can't marry that person. But you need to investigate if they've really divorced, if that lady is divorced. And if she's divorced, then that's what you want. You can go for it. Okay. We have Samuel from Kaswa. Good evening, Samuel. Um, you are live on Ask the Counselors. Go ahead with your question. Good evening, Samuel. Okay. Uh, Samuel, go, ahead with, go ahead with your question. Hello, Samuel. Go ahead with your question. So, repos. One year relationship with who I decided to marry. But due to some issues and some attitude, I decided to um, concentrate on myself. So, I, I tried not to call her for about this month. So, I was there one day. And he called her, she wanted to see me. So she came home and she came to say that she has done a lot of mistakes and she's begging me for whatever she has done. And she was on the verge of entering into a marriage with another man. But due to the treatment she had from that guy, she don't think <laughs> she can marry that man. She even cancelled a counseling that she was even into. And it's me that she feels was so she's pleading that she forgive her and I should take her. So I just want to know whether it is healthy for me to be with her. Okay. Mm. All right, because I still love her and I still want to marry her. So I just want to know whether it is very healthy for me to 
to be with Christ. All right, thank you. You will do so again. All right, thank you. Uh, so can you all right so summarize what yes so said. Samuel says that um, he, he was in a relationship with a lady for one year um, due to the lady's attitude and a few other things he decided to call it off and um, he decided not to call her for six months after six months the lady came back to him and said that she was actually on the verge of getting married to another man they were actually going through counseling and she had to um, stop the counseling because of the way the man was treating her but she feels that Samuel is the man for her mm. um, and Samuel also says that he loves the, he loves the woman and wants to marry mm. her um, what should he do uh, what is the advice for him for me um, you should be careful if it's a, if a, if it's a, Samuel, you're a, if you're a Christian pray and really get God's uh, what God was saying about it, because it could be a recipe for disaster. Uh, is it because that religion did not work? That's yes. why it's coming. Mm -hmm. And are you sure that the challenges you had at first that made you want to leave there? Uh, are they gone? You understand. So th these are situations where you realize that you know you are going, you are, you are putting your head into fire, but you want to close your eyes and put your head in the fire. So, <laughs> so, so for me. Uh, if he came to me in the, in the, in the office, I would say no, you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Samuel, are, are you sure you, uh, you are not an afterthought? Yeah. So, yeah, so pray again and get convinced. Like Pastor has rightly said, you have to pray, otherwise. <laughs> yeah. right. So we have David from Kumasi. David from Kumasi. Good evening, David. Um, you are live on our, as the counselors. Go ahead with your question. Uh, I'm, a young, I'm a young guy of 34 years. I got married and due to some problem at work, I resigned and the woman divorced me. But since then, it seems I'm afraid to get married again. And I'm someone I wish to marry so that I will not be chasing women here and there. But, but got, I'm have, having some fear in me to go in again uh, to get married. So I want to see how the cancer can help me okay. so that I'll go up from that thing and right. can get married and be free. Okay, thank you so much. Are people, you are welcome. Are people normally say that? If you get an accident with a car, doesn't mean you won't sit in a car again because most probably it's a car that will take you to the hospital. <laughs> so the fact that you've had a challenge with one marriage doesn't mean that marriages will end up like that. Um, what you have to do is to get rid of the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. And get rid of the spirit of fear. And like you see us on this uh, uh, you can see up between us, you have about a hundred and something years of marriage because we've, we've done 35, 36, 34. So, you know, between us, a hundred and something. Is he working now? So it shows that marriage is possible. Now, if you are working, then I want to encourage you to pray, look, look at the ladies in your church, uh, uh, and uh, there might be somebody that you are attracted to and follow your heart if the character is fine get married to the person and go forward in life okay. all right so we have mamiefua from ntc uh, mamiefua good evening NTC. um you are live on ask the counselors okay Good evening, Mami Fua. Yeah, good evening. Uh, yeah, good evening. 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 Yeah, 
wasem bisa no intimpa cho jina ye na safre hello somebody okay yes tell us your name and where you are calling from you are live on act the counselors yes go ahead your name your name and where you are calling from from Tema. Tema. okay yes go ahead we didn't get the name but go ahead <laughs> Okay, so please readjust yourself and call us back. We'll be waiting for your call. Um, this is good evening, Pastor Selassie. Oh, time is time is fast, friend. All right, okay. So we have, we have just four minutes to end to end the show, um, but we we still could only just scratch the surface of the questions we had. We had over thirty pages of questions. We've only been able to tackle about six of them. But next week we are dedicating the show once again to to answering your questions and giving you the keys that you need to, to, to make your marriage work. So um, you can still keep sending your questions in at this point. Um, would, would do well to answer them. And But next week when we come back, we are still going to answer some questions. Um, at some point, we'll open the phone line so that you can call in and then have your questions answered. But you want to join us this Sunday, this is the month of August, all the, five, all the five Sundays of August. We have four Sundays left are dedicated to the family, to marital success, to raising kids. You want to tune in with your family, um, with us. You can also join us in the Perez Dome. Our doors are open. We have a very big auditorium that can accommodate as many people as want to come to church. So you want to also join us here um, on Sunday from 7 to 8.30, and then from 9 o'clock to 10.30 for our first and our second services, respectively. Um, on Tuesday, we have our breakthrough service, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then same time next week, Wednesday, we have our Ask the Counselor. Same time, you want to invite your friends, invite your family, any couple you know who are going through one challenge or the other. This is the place where they can get the answers they need to make their marriage work. The Bible says that in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And by counsel, war is waged. Your marriage must work and your marriage can work. And we have many testimonies here with us in the studio. This Friday, we also have Ask, and uh, we also have Give Me Children, which is from 8 p.m. We have a doctor who comes by. We have couples who have testimonies to share. And the doctor is there to answer all your questions in the area of fertility. If you're having problems with ovulation, menstruation, and um, fertility, there will be a doctor um, on hand to answer all your questions. Thank you for staying tuned. I'm going to hand over to Bishop and Mama as we agree together in prayer for you and your home and your family. Your life is never the same. Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for these viewers. We ask that you touch them. Lord, for anyone having any challenge in their marriage, we pray that you will heal that relationship. Let your glue of love touch them and meet them at their point of need and we pray for those believing to get married you let their partner show forth and we pray whatever the hindrances in getting married it will be broken by the power of the holy ghost those believing you for children you will grant it unto them in the name of jesus christ our resurrected king and for everyone that is sick we ask that you touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet in jesus name we call it done. Join us, same time, God willing, next week. Your life will never be the same. Thank you so much. I want to thank our various viewers who have been with us over this period, those who keep calling, those who keep sending their messages. Thank you for, being, for staying tuned. If at some point you feel you want to help sponsor this program, you are welcome to sponsor Ask the Counselors as we reach people in their homes and as we help them. Have a good night and a blessed week. God bless you.